Hi, today I'm joined by David Kepsel, who is an entrepreneur, author, philosopher, retired attorney, and educator whose recent research focuses on the nexus of science, technology, ethics, and public policy. He is the founder and CEO of EncryptGen. Welcome, David. Thank you, Christian. Okay, so first off, I am going to ask you with my first question. How big is the market for genomic data, and who is selling most of it? Who is buying most of it? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, many people don't realize that when they're doing genetic tests, when they're doing their 23andMe or Ancestry tests, really what they're doing is feeding an enormous market uh, that's hungry for genomic data for basic research. And that market is in the hundreds of millions of dollars. If we look at what happened last year, um, there was a uh, deal between GlaxoSmithKline, which is a large pharmaceutical company, and 23andMe uh, for $300 million, uh, where GSK got exclusive access for a period of time to the genetic data that 23andMe gets through its testing. And that data is used by those companies for their basic research into pharmaceuticals and health and wellness. So it's an enormous market. Yes, you're very right. It is a quite profitable market. And I looked at your website too. And you're tr what you're trying to do is give the genomic data some value and worth and security, which is very important and which some companies and people are not doing right now. Am I right? Yeah, and we're trying to put that value back in the hands of the people that we think own that data, which is the individual themselves, the people who are getting tested. And so when you do that test, you're allowing another company to profit off the data they're getting from you. And most people do this. Most of the customers of those companies are agreeing to do that. But we think the, the value of that data ought to be returned in some degree to the people whose data it is. And so we've created a market in which people can take the data they've gotten uh, through those tests and market it themselves directly to researchers and get paid for that data. Yes. Okay, that's very right. And what's wrong with the current market for data being sold by 23andMe and, and Ancestry? And why aren't customers happy about it? Yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that people don't realize uh, that they're really, a, uh, you know, they're not making 23andMe and Ancestry rich by buying tests. They're making them rich through the selling of the data that goes on. And we think that it's better uh, for people to be personally in control of their data, to personally direct um, where it goes and how it gets used, um, to be involved in that process, and to be able to also profit from it. Uh, so, you know, I, I think what, what those companies have, have done is really important for science um, because now there is a vast amount of data that people can use in their research. But we want to open that up. We want to um, do a more of a peer-to-peer -peer model, you know, where people are, uh, are selling the data directly to the people who are buying it instead of having um, the companies who are doing the testing getting the sole profit. Yes, that's very right. Um, also, the genomic data is very personal, and you are right when it comes to security and the worth of it. So tell us about your company. Yeah, so we, we want to be able to make sure that, you know, the, the sort of hacks and sort of um, um, uh, incidents where uh, companies that gather large amounts of data have had that data used in ways or taken in ways um, that have hurt people and exposed their personal information uh, doesn't, don't happen uh, to people's genetic data. Uh, this uh, data is associated with you in a very personal way. Um, it can identify you uh, and um, it can tell people about you uh, things that you may not wish them to know if you have a disease or other uh, genetic traits that could lead to diseases, etc. You should really be concerned about where that data goes and how it's used. So we de-identify the data that gets sold. We make sure 
um, that you can always revoke your, uh, your agreement to sell that data. Uh, and we really want to put people directly in control of, of that data instead of allowing some uh, uh, other party to, to maintain that control and to you know, ensure its security. That's a brilliant idea. So you're also saying that it can tell people about you, but the genomic data can also be used for other gene editing like CRISPR? Well, eventually it will be. So in the, you know, in the next couple of decades, uh, we're likely to see the uses for genetic data um, that we're only really dreaming of, uh, where we can start to uh, cure diseases, where we can start to improve uh, human traits, where we can, um, you know, develop new, new types of life forms, actually. Um, and as that future approaches, we really need to start to get a handle on how we control the data and, and secure for ourselves um, some um, basic principles about whose data it is, which isn't settled yet. Uh, you know, there's no law that says your genetic data is your genetic data. Um, so, you know, I used to write about uh, ethics and public policy, um, and I did it from the point of view of regulations and, and codes. Um, this time, the code we're using is computer code. Uh, so we decided to create a technology that would help us to take control of the data that would really sort of settle some of these issues that I've been talking about in a way that, you know, um, governments uh, will have to follow instead of lead. Yes, you are thinking about the present and the future, too, because you're really seeing the value in the genomic data, and you're saying that a lot of people don't protect it. That's correct, yeah, and, and governments really don't uh, protect it right now. There's no, um, un, you know, there's no global agreement on the nature and of the ownership of that data and who gets to control it. So we really think we need to start taking control of it through, um, you know, through technological means uh, and then allow uh, governments to, to follow that lead. Okay, so you're saying the gene chain can solve the problem. And we what are those part, problems? We think that's part of it. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, it's not the sole solution, but it's part of the solution. Okay. Why did you choose to use a cryptocurrency as part of your marketplace for genomic data? Well, when we were developing on a blockchain at first, uh, our major concerns were security and uh, creating an audit trail and uh, using the, the um, cryptography behind it to help to uh, um, you know, protect the data. Um, but it turns out when you, get it, when you make a blockchain, you get a, uh, the ability to create a cryptocurrency basically for free. So we realized it could be used as a means of settlement too for all of the trades on our on our system, uh, okay. and yeah. we also thought that the currency name DNA uh, was a nice branding, uh, um, uh, you know, an additional branding uh, mechanism for uh, what we've created. Okay, how does the blockchain encryption work? Okay, so you know the. Uh, the genomic data itself doesn't get um, put on the blockchain. That would be too heavy for all existing blockchain technologies, and nobody is going to uh, succeed in that effort if they try to do it. What we put is metadata, you know, data that identifies the individual's relation to the data on the blockchain. That becomes part of an audit trail, okay? So blockchains are immutable records. Uh, they can only be changed by general consensus of people who are running the blockchain. Ours is a permission blockchain, so we know exactly who's providing that consensus. And we can therefore track all of the uh, people doing business and all of their holdings and all of the connections to the genomic data using our blockchain. And that's something that you, know, you can't get from uh, other services right now. And our blockchain is also uh, publicly browsable. So you won't know who the person is, but you can always find the, the wallet number, um, you know, the wallet hash code, uh, so we can associate the, all of those transactions with uh, some end user. Yes, that's a great idea to put cryptocurrency intertwined with it because now people who are giving their genomic data 
can actually earn back from what they gave and they know where it is and it's in a very secure place. Yeah, well, and, and you know, recently Facebook announced their own cryptocurrency and a lot of their goals, you know, to provide an a means of access to transactions and wealth for people around the world, people who might not even be able to access banks. Um, those are the same fundamental principles we're working from uh, well, and which uh, guided the foundation of our blockchain because everybody's got DNA and we think that is a vast source of wealth for everybody um, and we can help to provide a channel for that wealth for them to be able to realize its value, take care of their health using it and then also get paid. That is really, really important and you are really thinking not just about yourself but like you said it's about the ethics and for everyone around you so you're not just like it's a great idea because it's not for it's not being greedy it's helping others too and seeing the Our, value and worth in it right yeah well, well you know we were actually uh, first guided by our interest in open science uh, and uh, in uh, making sure that people have access to and control of their data uh, but we had to develop a business plan so we do make money through um, a small commission on each transaction just 10 percent of the cost of the transaction we think that's a very modest amount and it's enough to keep our our uh, platform running um, but give most of the, the wealth uh, that's realized in a transaction to the people whose data it is. Okay. What's your plan for growth in the future? Yeah, so we think that there's going to be a, a real big push in the near future for um, health insurance plans throughout the United States and elsewhere to start to order genetic testing for their customers. Uh, because that testing will be able to be used to some degree for uh, their health care to bring health costs down. Um, and uh, uh, we actually have recently entered into a memorandum of understanding uh, to engage in a, 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 an actual research project to see if that's the case. So uh, we've, there's going to be um, um, many tens of thousands of people taking part in that research program that will be using our service and we'll see, you know, how it works for them, uh, whether it reduces their healthcare costs, and whether it's uh, eventually uh, worthwhile for healthcare plans to to offer that testing. And we think that's going to be the case. Yes, you're right. And this is very, very interesting. So, how can people follow your work and learn more about what you're doing? Well, you can always go to EncryptGen.com um, and uh, see our latest blog posts, our latest news, um, and create an account. That's the first thing you should do. And even if you haven't done a genetic test, you can go to our website um, and then from there to my.EncryptGen.com, create a profile, and you can actually see if anybody's interested in getting your data before you've ever done a test because the people can, uh, researchers can ask you uh, and offer for you uh, to pay uh, in case you do get a test. So create a profile, check us out, um, and you'll see actually we've had a, about 150 transactions so far. Um, people are making on average about $25 per uh, test um, that they've uploaded, and that's in the past seven months that we've been operating. Um, there's really nothing to lose. There's no fee to, to create a profile and upload your data. Yes. Okay, today I'm joined by David Kopsel. He is an entrepreneur, author, philosopher, retired attorney, and educator whose recent, recent <laughs> research focuses on the nexus of science, technology, ethics, and public policy. Thank you for joining today, David. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Christian.